In what can only be described as an unsurprising turn of events, we have seen people fired after winning a $15 minimum wage. I don't think necessarily the minimum, minimum wage is the problem here. The problem is technological advancement and the cost of, uh, of, of upgrades versus the cost of staff. Minimum wage can work, in my opinion, if there, there, are, there are no alternative choices. But there's a, there's a problem now that affects many of these low-skilled jobs. Walmart, for instance, they introduced self-checkout. And they, they used to have four people at a, at a register, and now it's one person watching the self-checkout. They paid for the initial cost of the upgrade and reduced their staff. If we didn't have self-checkout technology, they would have no choice but to hire on more people. Or, call, you know, they push more people to work. It's still possible that a minimum wage could result in a company reducing staff and just making their staff work harder. But for a company like Walmart, I think it makes sense. Let's say the minimum wage is, you know, seven bucks an hour. You introduce it to 10, and Walmart says, oh, well, we have no choice. And now they have to give a higher salary to their staff. That I understand. The problem is new technology is emerging, and you can't just enforce a, minimum, a new minimum wage without paying attention to the current state of technology. Because now fast food restaurants are just firing all of these people and putting in kiosks, which are efficient. So technological advancement can be held off if the cost of keeping a person on staff is lower than the cost of an upgrade. Some of these kiosk machines can cost tens of thousands of dollars. And Walmart might be like, well, look, if we spend 50 grand now, we save all of that money for forever, basically, until the kiosk breaks. But paying someone hourly only costs us like 10 grand per year, so it kind of is, it, I'd, rather, I'd rather not invest 50 grand up front and just pay the 10 or 12 per year. You see what I'm saying? So when it comes to buying, like leasing a, a car or something, sometimes people, even if they can afford to buy it outright, would rather, you know, get a, a loan for it so that they can pay a little bit over time because it's easier to spend a couple hundred bucks per month than it is to drop 20 grand on a new car, even if you can't afford it. But now when we're looking at these jobs, is it any, is it any surprise that we're seeing people being fired when the technology exists and you're trying to force a business to pay as much as it would cost for a machine? Now consider this. If... So if you're going to pay someone like 12 grand per year, 13,000 per year, which is like minimum wage in many places, and a kiosk costs 50, uh, 30 grand, right? You're going to be like, well, I might as well just pay a minimum wage. It's cheaper per year, you know, than three years of paying, you know, what I'm going to, what's going to cost me for the, for the kiosk. Let's say you increase their minimum wage to $15, and now the cost of keeping them on is starting to rival the cost of that machine. You're going to go, eh, screw it, let's upgrade. And then you're going to fire the people. Let's read some of the story. And I got some other, other important points I want to bring up too. Because surprise, surprise, at least reported by Investopedia, some of these Scandinavian countries that are touted as bastions of social policy and social democracy don't have minimum wages. I'm not opposed to, to, to the minimum wage. In fact, quite the contrary. I think they can work in many circumstances. And I'm actually in favor of increasing them. But the problem with the left, as I see it, and the reason why I'm constantly annoyed by these things, is because they shoot from the hip. They don't think about the consequences of their actions. It's like a Chinese finger trap. Sometimes pulling, you know, trying to get your fingers out, not going to work. You got to push in. So can a, can a minimum, minimum wage work? Yes. Is it the most effective way to raise base salaries and wages? Not necessarily. And all you've done is hurt people because you're not paying attention to the market. It's a simple solution to a complex problem and it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. And I think we can come up with a plan to make it work but they don't think about the numbers, they don't look at the numbers for the businesses, and then people end up getting fired, and now they're making zero. It's a complicated problem. Let's read the story. New York City's fast food industry has served as a laboratory for the nation's labor movement in the last several years. Its workers were the first to stage rallies demanding a minimum wage of $15 an hour. Then they pressed for changes in the way national restaurant chains set their work schedules. Now they're asking for city council to shield them from being fired without a valid reason. That protection, the sort of job security that unions usually bargain for, would be a first for a city to provide to workers in a specific industry, labor, ex labor law experts say. City Councilman Brad Lander said he planned to introduce a bill on Wednesday that would require fast food businesses to show just cause for firing workers and give them a chance to appeal dismissals through arbitration. That's pointless. I'll tell you why. If I have a business that makes $50,000 per year, small business, barely any money, and I hire someone on to pay them $10,000 per year. You then demand I pay the person $15,000 a year. I then say, 
I can't afford it. Just cause? The business will collapse if I keep this person on staff. It's cheaper for me to replace them with a machine. You will likely find that a business can fire someone if they can't afford to pay them. This is not a solution. Once again, they enacted a policy which we have seen negatively affect workers in other, uh, other cities and states as well, and their solution will not solve the problem. Again, I do not think the solution is necessarily no minimum wage. I think a min minimum wage can make sense in a lot of ways. But if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, you're not solving anything. You're just layering on more problems. Okay, now you want to pass a law to force businesses to have just cause. That's not going to change anything. These are not unfair firings. While they may try to claim, oh, I'm firing you for some BS reason, they can just say, we can't afford it anymore. How do you force a business to pay someone when you don't have money? Mr. Lander, a Democrat from Brooklyn, said he was responding to surveys of fast food workers indicating there's a substantial percentage of employees that have been fired unfairly, define unfairly. One woman said she was fired from a Chipotle restaurant for not smiling enough. Okay, sure, but Chipotle doesn't need to justify. I mean, look, these laws be, keep getting passed and maybe they do need to start, you know, coming up with legitimate reasons other than we don't have the money for it. But restaurant, so they continue. But restaurant industry officials and lawmakers who represent the industry said the proposal was just the latest stratagem employed by a national union that has been trying to organize fast food workers ever since they first staged protests for better wages and working conditions in 2012. I, I think we have a problem. I do. I do not believe it's fair that you will tell someone, I want you to work to provide a service in society, but you will not be allowed basic necessities, right? It's a challenge. A lot of people have this view of, like, they, they don't understand the difference between an iPhone and healthcare. Because healthcare can save your life, they somehow think it should be just given to you regardless of whether or not the economy can support it. This is one of the big challenges of providing healthcare to everybody. Let's look at it this way. A hundred years ago, if you, um, I'm assuming, let's say 120, if you said that you had uh, some kind of bacterial infection, they'd say, I'm sorry, you're going to die. There's no amount of money that will cure you. Some people might have been super rich, and they say we have an experimental treatment. It's very expensive because we, we're just trying it out. Now, penicillin is invented, and now they have a very powerful antibiotic and the, and, the, and the derivative antibiotics that come from it. Because we've developed this technology and mass produced it, it's become very cheap. We can then provide it to people, and they have better health care. There's an old saying that the, a homeless person today, or not a homeless person, but a person in poverty today has better dental care than John Rockefeller did because of technological advancement. But something interesting happens. When the new iPhone comes out, people don't clamor and say, I deserve this new expensive technology. While I understand the iPhone's price is jacked up, when new technology comes out like televisions, the big TVs are very expensive. Over time, they start, we start to uh, um, streamline mass production and it becomes cheaper to produce and cheaper to sell, uh, easier to sell, it's more, more uh, inexpensive, and then people who make less money, are now they now get access to, te to this technology. The same is true for medication. The same is true for how th these, these businesses function. So what ends up happening is people think, think, well, if a cure is developed, I have a right to it. Not understanding it may still be extremely expensive to provide that. This is one of the big problems we have in how people determine what they should or should not get. So when we look at fast food workers, technology, protests, and making these demands, we have to recognize a few things. I'm kind of going on a tangent here. We can't guarantee everything for everybody. Uh, technology and capitalism has given access. Like poor people today are technically not poor 100 years ago. That's the point I'm trying to make, right? So while we do want to increase wages and make sure people have a guarantee. Okay, well, let me start over. The point I'm trying to make is it's not fair in my opinion. To, to tell someone you have to do a job in our society, but you're not going to live in a, like a, a, at a certain level. You're going to be a drag of society, even though you do provide a function. The challenge is we have to recognize that even if somebody just works at McDonald's and they do struggle to pay rent and all of these things, that, that's a serious problem. Cost of living makes it very difficult for someone to even live in a city and have basic necessities. Still recognizing that working in that job, you're better off than you would be in many other countries. I think it's hard to see the nuance. In my opinion, I lean left because I don't think it's fair to demand someone provide a service to society but not reward them at like a certain level. And it's hard to know where that level is. Is it $15 an hour? I honestly don't know. I, 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 I would actually, I, I do like 15. I really do like a $15 minimum wage. I would actually advocate for that. The problem is we have to go over all of the repercussions or ramifications of what that would do. 
And I have no problem admitting, as much as I want to get a minimum wage for all workers up to something like $15 to be at that level, I recognize it may actually be a detriment in the long run. What we need to do in that regard, then, is if we want to help people sit down, pr propose a plan. Okay, what would happen if we do a minimum wage at this level? It's going to backfire. People will get fired. Okay, what can we implement to make sure we protect workers? One of the reasons that I actually lean left, as, lean left as well is that I don't believe it is fair in a society that someone can be removed from their job due to technological advancement through no fault of their own. There's nothing they can really do. And a good example of this would be like a coal miner. Is telling a coal miner to learn to code fair? Absolutely not. Should, like, you know, people have to fight to survive. I understand that. But at a certain point, you've dedicated your life to an expertise, even if you're not the smartest person in the world, and the best thing, you're, the best thing you can do is flip a burger. Is it your fault that kiosks got invented and now you can't work and you're starving? It's not. Maybe there's some other low-skilled work you, we, you can do, but I don't think it's fair that we would go to a fast food worker or up to a petroleum engineer or a coal miner and say, your job has become obsolete, therefore learn to code. I don't like that idea. And it presents a challenge. What do we do? Protectionism? Laws to guarantee jobs? I really don't know. But I do think we need to come up with solutions to protect somebody who dedicated their life to serving their community in, an, in the appropriate way, working hard, and then technology changed, and now they're out of a job. We cannot have a society that does that, especially as technological, technological advancements continue to, to get, you know, move faster and faster. Long story short, this minimum wage is backfiring, and I, I, I'm not surprised in the least bit. But I, but I want to make this video to try and say, listen, recognize the issue. I don't see the difference between the fast food worker who was fired because a kiosk was invented and the coal miner who was fired because we don't, we're not using coal as much, we're using natural gas or something. How do we protect these people? I really would like to hear some logical solutions. I lean towards social, social uh, programs, but I, but I, but I, man, I really don't know. It's not fair to give someone free money. It's not fair to give these people like a, a stipend off the backs of somebody else. But what can we do? Telling them learn to code is not an appropriate response. I really don't know the solution. You let me know. But I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow on the main channel at 10 a.m. Thanks for hanging out.